All right, in this video, we are going to be beginning our study of electricity with the idea of charge. All electrical phenomena uh, begin with charge. I'll write that down. All electrical phenomena begin with charges. What are electrical phenomena? Well, you were watching this video on a computer. I would call that an electrical phenomenon. It needs electricity to run the, um, to run the processors, uh, the graphics, everything that electricity comes from a battery. We're gonna find the course of this, uh, this semester that electricity is a movement of charges. Some of you might have taken off a sweater last winter and noticed that your hair stood up on end, or maybe you've been jumping on a trampoline at some point in your life and noticed that your hair started standing up. That is what we usually call static electricity. Uh, again, an electrical phenomenon <clears throat> that begins with charges. Charges are fundamental to the study of electricity and magnetism, as we'll find out later in the semester. So what are charges? Well, at some level, that's a very difficult question to ask or, and to answer because charges are um, qualities of subatomic particles. Um, just like uh, things like charm or strange are qualities that you may have heard of. Uh, of other subatomic particles. Just like mass is the quality of a subatomic particle, a charge is just a quality of a subatomic particle. And that doesn't really tell you a whole lot, but in some sense, that's almost as far as we can go. But given the fact that charges exist, that we can see their effects, we do know some things about charges that we can observe. Number one, charge comes in two flavors or two varieties. Most of you will know these are positive, which we signify with a plus sign, and negative, which we signify with a minus sign. Uh, roughly corresponding to what we think about when we think about positive numbers and negative numbers. There's nothing pejorative here. These are just two words that were assigned to the two different kinds of charge. Why are there two charges and not three or not one? We don't know. Uh, there's only one kind of mass, right? Uh, we don't know why there's only one mass, one kind of mass and two kinds of charges, but there are. And given that we can uh, observe positive and negative charges, we can observe some things about them. The second thing we know about charges is that positive, uh, I should not say that, I should say like charges repel and opposite charges attract. Now, when I say words like repel and attract, what you should be thinking of are forces. A repulsion <clears throat> is a force. An attraction is a force. And so what we can say is that charges give rise to forces. Some of those forces are attractive. Some of them are repulsive. We know some things about forces because we've been through physics one. We know that gravity is a force that arises between two masses. Now we can say that the electrical force is a force that arises between two charges. Uh, the main difference between those two is that we've never observed a repulsive gravitational force. Gravity is always attractive, but electricity can be attractive or repulsive, but it gives rise to forces. Of course, positive and negative are going to come into our characterization of forces because in physics, 
positive and negatives mean direction. And so the attraction and repulsion, we're going to have to develop some sign conventions to deal with that. So there's two things we know about charges. It comes in two varieties, positive and negative. Uh, the second thing, like charges repel and opposite charges attract. We know some other things about charges, however. We know that, number three, there is a smallest unit of charge. And I'm going to put in parentheses, sort of. <laughs> As it turns out, uh, there is a charge on that is carried by, I should say, an electron. I'm going to assume that you know what an electron is, or at least have a basic understanding, because I'm going to assume at some point in your life you've been through some sort of chemistry class, either in high school or in college. Uh, an electron has a charge of minus 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. That's a very small number. The units of charge are going to be coulombs, which I will uh, write with an uppercase C. That is after the French physicist Charles Coulomb. But the units of charge are coulombs. The electron has a charge of minus 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. That is rounded. There are more decimal places if you're interested. Uh, but that is the charge of an electron. It is negative. A proton has a charge of positive 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, right? Um, we call this the smallest unit of charge or the fundamental charge. This number, this 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th, uh, sorry, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, we, it's obnoxious to write that down all the time. Just like in physics 1, it was kind of obnoxious to write down 9.81 meters per second squared all the time. So what do we do? Being good, lazy physicists, we wrap that number up in uh, the letter G. Here, we're going to wrap this number, three lines means definition, in E for uh, the fundamental charge. By fundamental, what I mean is smallest unit. Now, I'm going to say that this is the smallest unit of charge. Uh, as it turns out, that's not exactly the case, because we know now that if we take a proton, we can actually split up a proton into its constituent particles, each of which carries a fraction of this number. But that is a different class. For the purposes of this class, the smallest amount of charge uh, we can ever find is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, which I will refer to as the fundamental charge, or simply as E. So we can say now that an electron has a charge of minus E. A proton has a charge of plus or positive E. E is always going to be defined positively, just like in physics 1, little g was always defined positively. If you need it to be negative, that's fine. You have to put the negative sign on the outside. But that is the third thing we know about charges, that there is a smallest unit of charge, which we call the fundamental charge. The fact that it is the charge of a proton and an electron is significant, because what we can say about these two things are protons and electrons are called, in, the, in this framework I should say, they're called protons and electrons, but they're called charge carriers. Carrier should give you the idea that we are going to at some point be moving charges around, and that is true. As it turns out, um, usually, not always, but usually, 
Uh, if we're going to be moving charges around, we're going to be moving around electrons. It's a lot easier to move electrons than it is protons. Protons are bound up in the nuclei of atoms, uh, and it's a little harder to move those around. It is possible, although we usually don't move the whole proton, we don't move the proton, we usually move the whole atom, which has probably been ionized, that is, some of the electrons have been taken off, or some electrons have been put on, and we can move around the whole atom. But the idea is protons and electrons are called charge carriers because they carry with them the, the charge that they contain, and if they get attached to something else, especially in the case of an electron, they carry that charge to that object, right? So this is the fundamental charge. We know something else about charges. Um, which is this, charge is conserved, and I'm going to put in, I'm going to just say, without writing it down, charge is conserved in any physical process which we are going to study in this course, right? If you go on to other courses, uh, you will find some ideas about that and whether or not it's the case. But in this course, charge is conserved. Conserved is one of those physics words which should make you pay attention. In physics one, you saw that energy was conserved and that turned out to be really important. You saw that momentum was conserved. That turned out to be really important. Well, guess what? Charge is conserved and that is also very important. What we're, gonna, what we're saying is that in any physical process, whatever charge you start with has to be the charge you end up with. You can move it around, but it has to be there and the same amount of charge it was uh, to begin with. So that is what we know about charges. And that is going to cover this first section.